Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel Trading Secrets. This channel is for entertainment purposes only. For those of you who do not know, my name is Ali. I have over 20 years experience teaching accounting, economics, business and law. Through this channel, I'll be providing some stock analysis and a quick update on the million dollar challenge. So for anybody who's not aware of this, this is a genuine investment of $1,000 to a return of $1 million over a period of three years using a strategic or compound return investing. So the objective is try to get 201 trades, each with an average return of 3.5%. It's not 201 consecutive trades, we do take into account losses. So for further details about how to join us for less than $9 a month, information is available in the description below. In today's video, we're going to be looking at MNTLP and asking the question, was it about to open at $2,000 per share if the U3 halt did not happen? We're also going to be looking at an important letter to Schwab from a retail investor and also looking at the statute of limited limitations for securities fraud, which I think is important for everybody to know. And uh, we're also going to be looking at tick symbol MMA team of materials, which have just filed an 8K and uh, finishing off by having a look at a review of the weekly watch list and tick symbol NNE. So stay tuned for that. So um, before we get started, let's have a look at uh, what happens in what's happening in the market so for the close of the week uh, it was a four day week the Dow ended up 1.4 uh, percent up the s p 500 ended up 0.6 percent up and the nasdaq overall ended fairly flat so um what unusual whales have st stated here is the stock market is in its longest stretch without a two percent sell-off since the financial crisis so that uh, is good news and if we have a look at the heat map we know that the previous week of trading was um, quite mixed and uh, I think the one that stands out for me there is the drop in Nvidia which did have a, a, an impact on many of the other tech stocks and uh, in terms of earnings this week we can see the ones that we will certainly be looking at will include uh, Micron, we'll be looking at Nike, Levi's and also FedEx uh, amongst many others and finally uh, shout out here to uh, Stock Market News who posted about Tesla and they've stated here that Wedbush and Dan Ives have just stated that Tesla's right now is the most undervalued AI play on the market. So now I'm going to proceed to have a look at a letter to Schwab from a retail investor. So before we do that, let's have a look at a post about Schwab from Kristen, who stated Charles Schwab has about 12 million certificates of MMTLP at the DTCC. Uh, and um, the MMTLP community have verified investor data from Schwab potentially being oversold 5x uh, in terms of the amount of certificates. So here's where it gets interesting. And according to FINRA, Hilltop Securities does third-party broker services with Schwab. Now, if we go back to the previous video, we know that Hilltop Securities was on the U3 panel uh, at FINRA and potentially obviously had inside information and also a decision maker in the U3 halt. So a significant situation here implying a conflict of interest. So let's all now have a look at the post um, uh, about the letter to uh, Schwab from Scott. And he stated here he has a demand letter based on Schwab. TDA personal admission that TDA asked for the U3 nuke. So we're going to go ahead and have a look at the letter uh, in terms of just some of the key highlights uh, of this letter. So he's addressed it to the Richard A. Worcester, who's the president of Charles Schwab. And he's dated here, significant evidence exists within Schwab that, uh, and also with regard to TDA and Meritrade. Uh, and he states here, this was, the pri the, well, this was the primary driver for shutting down the trading in the ticker. MMTLP on or about 9th of December 2022. It did so in collusion with GTS Securities, used electronic means to do so and did so in derogation of numerous federal laws. So this is the allegation from uh, Scott. So uh, the, the other important section I'm going to highlight uh, from Scott's letter is section E and he states here questions to be presented at the US Supreme Court, which he intends to do. Uh, and what Scott has stated is, uh, if I am forced to litigate, I will be going to the U.S. Supreme Court on a request for an emergency grant of Satoria as the U.S. government's SEC and FINRA are keenly aware that the shareholders defrauded in MMTLP have until the 8th of December 2024 to file a suit as the statute of limitations will toll. So that's very, very significant and that's a key date. And I think every uh, retail investor needs to be aware of that date. So let's just cross-reference that uh, date. So what Chad has uh, stated here, using the Securities Exchange Act of 1934, Section 10B, we can see here uh, there are two distinct time frames, and the one that we are looking at here from Scott's point of view is a two-year statute of limitations 
uh, and a five-year statute of uh, repose for securities fraud. And what Chad has stated is obviously tagging in uh, Ralph Norman. A meeting with the DTCC is in the coming week is weeks is not going to cut. The time for posturing and delays has come and gone. We want some light on the issue through a public inquiry, and uh, I certainly could not agree much more with that. But um, what I'm now going to do is have a look at section A of Scott's letter. Uh, now he's talking talking here about his correspondence with Schwab and he states here in his correspondence they acknowledge making a request for an illegal 9th of December 2022 FINRA U3 trade hall should we say allegedly he dialed into their number uh, and he spoke to a person called Ron Fleming so uh, Ron Fleming and in this conversation uh, it was stated that Ron mentioned uh, he, he did mention in the conversation three issues that I thought clearly showed trading was not going to protect small investors, i.e. retail investors, but the broker dealers and, uh, and potentially those shorting this were going to be protected. Uh, and what Ron stated, according to Scott here, is he stated that it was, MMTLP was trading at 100 times the lit market. That's very staggering. In the dark pools and people were crazy to think that broker dealers would pay out on that and i think uh, some of the early calculations that we saw it would have potentially cost the, uh, the hedge funds and the broker dealers hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars and potentially bankrupt many many of them but obviously the rules of trading are is they should have accepted infinite risk and that didn't happen so uh, the important thing here we're going to look at is section five and he states here orders were staging at tda and other brokers from $298 per share to almost $25 per share. And he states here, clear evidence exists that TDA was accepting limit orders over $4,000 a share. Again, uh, I certainly think this is true. Uh, and it's conceivable that MMTLP trading had detonated with a velocity akin to a nuclear weapon and a short squeeze, which we did not see because of the U3 hull. Uh, and finally, I'm going to move on to have a look at uh, Scott's summary page and he states here, number one, uh, he has provable damages over $3 million. Schwab and Ari Rubenstein were, uh, were and continue to be the proximate cause of his damages. Schwab has breached his duties under his client agreement. And number four, he intends to conduct so scorched earth litigation in the same way he prevailed against two larger corporations identified there. And finally, number five, what Scott has stated here is Ari Rubenstein has defrauded the US government out of approximately $175 billion in tax revenue. He looks forward to fi filing on behalf of the citizens of the United States of America and potentially generating a criminal case against Rubenstein along the way under RICO. So in effect, what Scott is saying is Ari Rubenstein has allegedly defrauded the US people of $175 billion in tax revenue that could have been spent on healthcare, education, housing, homelessness, poverty, and the American people. That money has gone. And finally, he states here, I will commence suit at the time of my choosing, but will give Schwab until the 5th of July, 2024, and to review his claim and make him whole. I think that Scott is being very, very reasonable here. So before looking at the 8K for Meta Materials, a uh, shout out here to Justice for MMTLP Investors, who was continuing with the theme in the previous video by identifying some of the key uh, members of the U3 panel, U3 Holt panel at FINRA. And the first one here that we're going to look at today is Joseph Irasi, and it states here, you are one of the members that pressed the U3 Holt. Uh, look at the long li list of broker dealers. Rico charges are terrible. No conflict of interest here to see. I think a sar sarcastic comment there. And Joseph Iraqi, managing director exposure, managing for online investing. Uh, and obviously he has connections there with Robin Hood. Uh, so again, um, let's now move on to uh, Meta Materials. And we can see here there was an 8K form that was uh, submitted. And uh, this was uh, also uh, in, in response to a previous video where we looked at previous 8k and unfortunately this is not good news so i have summarized um, uh, here in terms of the 8k and what it means and what the company is saying but basically it states here i, I posted that meta materials has released the 8k confirming they have received a deposit in the amount of two million dollars for all the assets used by nsc in addition to this they have also entered into an intellectual property purchase and uh, purchasing 
uh, assignment agreement with a US battery design and technology company, uh, and so, which is sold and assigned to battery IP by a certain intellectual, intellectual property rights and other assets related to the company's NPOR business unit. So not good news here, they are basically selling NPOR. Uh, and previously we saw that they were selling the assets of uh, Nanotech. Uh, and this states here includes third, par third party licensing agreements and the cash that Meta Materials are, are they are getting here. Total consideration is $825,000 payable in cash. So uh, my summary of this is that overall this is not good news. Meta Materials is stripping away all its assets and I think the only thing left will be of a limited value. I finally like to finish off by having a quick review of the previous week's weekly watches. Some of the stocks that we called out included Tixamo KA, that was up 34.8% on the week. REPL, that was up 4% on the week. And also a strong finish on Friday when it was up 8%. The best call of the week was Tixamo NNE, that was up 59% uh, uh, on the week and also up 120%. Uh, of the previous five trading days. We know Wednesday was not a trading day. Uh, ZG, that was up 2.5% on the week. Uh, KRON, that was up 3% um, on the week. VRNA, another one that we're looking at, up 12% Monday and then finished level on the week. MDRR, that was down 1.5% on the week, so not all calls are successful. And if you would like to get a copy of the next weekly watch list, details are in the description below. Thank you very much for watching. Please stay tuned.